How's it guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is something of an education which I'm actually really excited about and that's because Xiaomi's asked me to do a comparison between a traditional home network setup versus a mesh setup. Now a lot of people both on the channel, my friends and family are always asking me what solution should I go for and it's a very difficult question to answer because everyone's got different needs and requirements, different devices. So let's go through the two devices that we're going to be comparing today and that is going to be the 4C router from Xiaomi and in order to extend your network we got the AC1200 extender. Now the home network that I personally run is a mesh network and it's the same mesh network that I did a tutorial for which is the AX3000. Now rather than just giving you facts figures and saying you should choose this or you should choose this, I really want to give an education that actually informs you and guides you in order to make your own decisions when choosing your home network. So for that, we're going to be going over things like the specs, the performance, what all these different things mean. What is AC1200? What is AX3000? What does the X mean? What is Wi-Fi 5? What is Wi-Fi 6? And so on and so forth. So that by the end of the video, you can say, hey, I actually understand what the box says and now I can apply this to my own life. Now, the first clear break or definitive point that we need to be looking for is the Wi-Fi type or the Wi-Fi generation. Right now we're on Wi-Fi 6E with Wi-Fi 7 coming out but for the intents of this video we're going to be looking at Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 as they're the most commonly adopted in households. Now the difference between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 as you can see in the graphic ahead of you is the speeds at which the signal is able to transmit data. So when looking at these speeds you've got to be able to identify okay, am I able to transfer that much data in my home network? And more importantly, are the devices that I'm transmitting to Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5 compatible? So that is the first thing that you need to look at is look at your phone, is it Wi-Fi 6 capable? Is your laptop Wi-Fi 6 capable? And am I gonna be able to get the best out of Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6? The next thing is the max theoretical bandwidth or something I call the max theoretical bandwidth in which you'll see on these boxes AC1200 or AX3000, that 1200 and that 3000 mean something. It's actually divided into the split on the bands as you've seen from the graphic. It's a different calculation or a different amount depending on the type of device but basically if you think about it logically if you've got a hundred meg line at home be very careful not to confuse megabits versus megabytes. So generally when we speak about our speeds at home we have got megabits. So I'll use my example. I've got a thousand megabit line which is a terabyte line effectively. That means if I have anything less than an AC1000, I'm actually choking my device. Now, if I only buy an AC1000, that means that I can only support my internet traffic for my download speed because I actually have a thousand up, a thousand down. So what the general sentiment is, is that you should look to double or more your line speed. And that's why I use AX3000. I do run a home network in LAN, but for my general traffic, I wanna make sure that I'm able to upload, download, which is actually total about 18,000 or 1,800 rather. And I also want to give a little bit of play for inter-device transmission. So to make sure that my devices or my network is not being choked up just by data, that other devices can communicate each other and not take up that full bandwidth allocation. The next thing that we have to look at, which I touched a bit on earlier, is device support. Now, if you're running Wi-Fi 6 devices, if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router or mesh that is capable of Wi-Fi 6, you're not gonna be able to get the best out of those devices because you're choking it on one side or another. So make sure that if you are a very modern household that uses a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices, if you're using a Wi-Fi 5, roots and extender or even a Wi-Fi mesh, you're actually really choking the performance of your home network. Another thing when it comes to device support is how many devices can this unit accommodate? So generally it will say it on the website that this can accommodate one to 10 devices or one to a hundred devices. So you gotta calculate, okay, at home, I've got a laptop, I've got a cell phone, my wife's got a cell phone, my daughter's got a cell phone, and ISO factor, we have 13 or 14 devices in the household. Now, if you only have a device that is capable of supporting 10, there's gonna be a demand on the network that cannot be accommodated. Therefore, you have to look at a solution that can accommodate up to 20 or maybe 30, depending if you're gonna be having a lot of guests or if you're gonna be adding devices. We interrupt your regular viewing for a personal anecdote. And this anecdote is that generally when people get their internet for the first time, they stay with the router that is supplied by their ISP. 
Now the personal example to which the anecdote refers is that when I got my device, I had a terabyte line. Now let's just focus on the download and ignore the upload. A terabyte line is a thousand megabits per second. The router that they gave me was an AC750, which across both bands could only accommodate 750 megabits. So that means that the router wasn't even capable of delivering the speed that my line was. Further to this, the router started to struggle when 10 or more devices were connected to it. And this caused poor service delivery to the devices that were connected, not because of my internet speed, but just because my router wasn't able to handle all the devices and transmitting the data to all these devices. The next is coverage and range. Now, the reason that I use mesh is because I don't want to have a thousand SSIDs. And SSID is basically, if you open up the Wi-Fi network, it's all those little names that you see popping down on a list saying this network, this network, and so on. Now, what generally happens when you have a modem with multiple extenders or repeat and so on is that you tend to get a list of a lot of SSIDs saying this is the extender for here, this is the extender here, or this is the repeater for here, here, here. It just depends on the type of device. But it can get really irritating if you're in a household and you have 13 repeaters, or let's be realistic, you've got two repeaters through password and encryption. Now the issue with repeaters and extenders is something called handoff. When you're connected to one SSID, that SSID wants to hold the signal until the signal breaks and only then hand off, which is something that I find advantageous around mesh is that because it seamlessly hands off depending on whichever is the strongest signal. So some devices do negate this, and this is definitely a feature that you wanna look at because some people say, wow, the Wi-Fi is really bad, but it's actually trying to hold on to a signal that is very far away rather than the signal that is closest. To conclude, I'm gonna give you a few scenarios and what you should choose. Now note, I'm not gonna give Wi-Fi generation. That is something that you need to choose by yourself. And I'm gonna speak only about the Wi-Fi 6 solutions for Wi-Fi 5. You just need to find an AC and something similar to the number that I give. Now for a one bedroom flat, I would look at something like a, actually in this case, I'll do a Wi-Fi 5, but an AC 1200, it's a nice entry level router and should cover a one bedroom flat pretty easily. If you do have any dead spots, you can extend. Now anything bigger than a two or three bedroom flat, a house for example, this is when you're gonna seriously want to consider using mesh devices. Example, the mesh device that I use. I've got a three bedroom flat, it's got very thick concrete walls, but the mesh does really well in extending my network to all the different parts of the house and only having the one SSID. Guys, I really hope that this education was informative, that it was helpful, and it helps you make the right choice when it comes to your home network. If you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below, and I will try my best to get to each and every single one of your questions. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, guys. Bye.